morning, everyone that's joining us in uh, this early morning in Australia. And uh, good afternoon for those coaches joining us in the United States. And uh, good evening for all the coaches joining us in Europe and that side of the world. Um, we really appreciate you prioritizing the time to connect with us in the first of our leadership webinar series. Um, Emma Doyle is going to share our, her top 10 tips for how we keep moving forward in these unprecedented times. Um, but before we get stuck in, just a few housekeeping items most of us would be used to when we're running courses and coaching. Don't have to worry about bathrooms or fire exits because most of you are in the comfort of your home offices. Uh, but just in terms of the webinar structure today, we're going to spend about 20 minutes or so with Emma, our keynote speaker, um, going through her top 10 tips. And then we're going to follow that up by about 5 to 10 minutes of questions from the audience. You can use the chat feature to log your questions, and uh, we'll review as many as we can at the end of this. Um, but without further ado, I'm very excited to kick off our first webinar with my good mate and colleague, uh, Emma Doyle. For those of you not as familiar with Emma, she unleashes potential through the E-factors, energy, empathy, and enjoyment. She's an international speaker, originally from now my hometown of Melbourne, Australia, and she helps us turn your motivation into activation. She's a high performance coach, and she's got an incredible background as a touring professional having represented Australia over 20 times. Um, she's passionate about helping individuals and team embrace coaching principles, allowing them to see beyond what they could have ever imagined. She's joining us today from Denver, Colorado. Good afternoon, Emma. Hi, hi, David. Thank you for that great introduction and g'day everybody uh, from Denver. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and obviously everyone's time is, is really valuable and. Uh, yeah, really uh, appreciate everyone logging on and, and joining us in this in this webinar. And this is only my third webinar, so uh, a learning curve for me still as well. And um, but just excited to be here, and I hope to bring energy, empathy, and enjoyment uh, to our session today. And and just wanted to straight away just acknowledge, you know, I think um, that we're all in the trenches, uh, you know. And I think as leaders in our industry, which which is you know, as coaches, we are leaders, we are role models. And of course, uh, we, you know, all of us are in this, in this boat of uncertainty. And, uh, and I think it's just, I think it's okay to, to acknowledge that and have that sort of moment of like, oh, you know, and really feel, feel the pain. But, uh, you know, I, I do tend to say never down for more than, and then I change that number based on how I'm feeling, maybe half a day or, or never down for more than 10 minutes. And the other day, I think it was 10 seconds. So with my pity party, but, um, but you know, we, we're certainly in the trenches. Uh, I'm sure, you know, the, the same's happening down under. What are your thoughts there? Oh, absolutely. Um, what amazes me, well, actually it doesn't amaze me because coaches are resilient and agile professionals. Um, but it amazes me how we're adapting each day, almost each hour by hour, and uh, how we're finding that balance between, you know, taking care of our clients, taking care of our members, um, trying to keep active community active and safe, and balancing that with uh, running our businesses at the same time. So I've just seen and heard some incredible things over the last few weeks. Yeah, very inspiring. Yeah, yeah, same. And, you know, history's taught us, you know that all challenges will eventually pass so we will get through this and uh you know i'm sure new opportunities that, that we never knew existed uh will arise um through through this time and obviously you know we everyone's health and safety and well-being of course is, is one of our number one priorities but yeah look today i just wanted to uh to share uh what i came up with my top 10 tips of what we can do um, for this concept of continuing to move forward in terms of uncertainty. And I think that's something that, you know, after our little pity party that we, that we do focus on, on the future and, and forward think and, and, um, and create that, those new possibilities. So, um, so I'd love to jump straight in. Uh, we've got to get through 10. So is that cool with you, David? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just going to uh, bring up your PowerPoint so we can get stuck into it. Fantastic. So as you do that, I'll uh, go straight into strategy number one. And that strategy is called the wish list. So um, this is all about, you know, as you can imagine, um, 
one of the, the great concepts that I love um, that they do at Google and these types of organizations is actually creating rooms. And if you think right now being quarantined, rooms in your house, it might be a bean bag or it might be something a little bit different um, to sit in it and just go crazy. Think like a dreamer. Uh, imagine if you had an unlimited budget, unlimited resources. And uh, my last baseline chat was all about being the butterfly. So rising above your current situation and just have fun with that, that brainstorming and, and do it with you know, um, other people via these types, different types of communication methods. But, uh, but mix it up, mix it up somewhere in your house and strategy number one, really simple, the wish list. Put it out there, you know, we, we spend so much time on court, in, in the lessons, doing the lessons. Um, but, you know, how much time do we actually spend on the business when we remove ourselves, which we're obviously forced at the moment to create that wish list. So that's strategy number one. Uh, moving into strategy number two, we're going with the realist. Okay, so now, David, what we've done, we've got those wish list ideas and we're saying to ourselves, all right, now let's get realistic. And we're looking for low hanging fruit. So what are those, uh, uh, ideas that you can get quick wins like what are the easiest things for you to accomplish I'm, I'm a I love a to-do list and this little blue highlighter yeah, there's nothing better than just like hit hit the really easy things first and just seeing uh, how many times I've, I've old school highlighted um, what I've achieved and and just on that note uh, one thing I think as coaches that we never really do as well um, with that wish list is actually uh, giving an example um, is creating procedure manuals because you know one of the things that we do well uh, and then we think how did I do that and we don't often create a, a, a procedure manual so one of the things I love is even just when a new client walks in the door um, you know there's a really great strategy around how we can help that person fall in love with love with tennis and so procedure manuals is, is a great um, a realist idea. It's not very cool or exciting, but it's actually getting down to the nuts and bolts of what's going to help um, help your business. So that was one, I, one idea I had. And then the other one under realist is actually, um, and, and being quarantined, is breaking your day up into segments. So think about uh, also when you think best and then how do you, do you break up that day? So um, thinking time and then your to-do list time and, and really putting um, almost a contextual marker, we call it, on your time so that you don't then get caught in the, maybe the social media rabbit hole or it's like making appointments and even exercising with yourself, make an appointment to exercise with yourself. Um, so that's strategy number two. Uh, moving into strategy number three, is of course natural style so what am i talking about here uh, as we know as coaches our ability to communicate is uh one of the most important skill sets that we have as a coach so just would love a quick reflection what kind of communicator are you naturally and what i'm really referring to here is um really getting our head into this whole online space um, that we're all sort of being in some ways uh, forced to consider. Uh, do you think that you naturally communicate better via video or is it through um, perhaps a voiceover or audio? Uh, maybe it's writing through um, blogging, et cetera, or is, is it drawing and, um, and, and those sort of IT skills? You know, I always say that we, we are all unique experiments of one and, uh, you know, we don't have to be good at all of them, um, but finding out and just really saying to yourself, okay, how is it that I communicate best? Um, I think when you're, when you're pushed into this, this space that we're all in now, I think that's a really good reflection question. So I'll, I'll pause for a breath there, David, and just ask you that question. How do you think you, you communicate naturally? Well, interesting. I always used to think that uh, I would be quite comfortable to be using video for athlete development, player development, um, but hated seeing myself on video. And of course, uh, you know, first webinar that I'm running this morning, so it's uh, so that's an awkward experience in and of itself. But uh, but then a couple of days ago, I read this article on digital leadership, and it was in the New York Times. It was a, a reflection from people who have worked um, in the military, where they usually have to use digital technology to communicate troops keep truth connected every day. And that notion of, you know, having to sink into the reality of what you're doing 
Um, and the minute that you sink into that reality that all of your empathy, all of your care actually does come across in the medium in ways that you can't imagine that it would. So it, it's been really yeah. fascinating to be reading that and then to just be experimenting myself, getting stuck yeah. in. Yeah. So speaking of getting stuck in, should we go to strategy four, which of course is share, share your content. That's number four. Let's go. Like, as you just said, you know, one person that obviously I follow is, um, is Gary V and, you know, he just says, just go for it, just put it out there. And then you'll soon find out how you communicate naturally and, and what people are like and what they don't like. Um, not that we need to get too caught up on that, but basically put your content out there. So obviously video lessons, live lessons, perhaps it's even a lesson at the same time as what you normally run a coaching lesson, uh, audio, um, voiceover, a, a match that, somebody's played you, you can add the add your voice in podcasting um just have a go uh writing obviously we mentioned blogging earlier um articles of course there's so many um great subscriptions that you could um po uh, pitch articles for as well as uh what's that book that you've always wanted to write and now's a great time to to throw out some ideas on that and uh and drawing um patterns of play uh match play reviews, lines, circles, it might be just a, an infographic that really captures uh, your, your um, key messages. One of my favorite all time things with online content is to draw models, huge fan of models, circles, squares, graphs, and how I can sort of um, unpack my IP into, into a model. I, I love doing that. So uh, all different forms of drawing. So that's, that's strategy four. So uh, jumping into strategy five, we've got curriculum development. So I would say this is, uh, I do a lot of mentoring um, with coaches that have small businesses and, and, uh, and even large clubs um, over the years. And this has been one area that I feel does often get put, put behind. Um, people are passionate about it. They really think it's important and they, they often might um, plan the week, but you know, what about planning the whole year? And uh, always my, my top tips around that is what's the mission? Start, start with the tactics. What's the associated movement that's really critical with that tactic? And of course, the mindset. What's the life skill that's associated with something like consistency? It might be patience. And then we gamify that. So what's the gamification thing within a training block? And, uh, and parents, let's be honest, uh, they love to know what's coming. They wanna know what's happening in advance. So, um, so there's sort of my quick tips on, on curriculum development, but it can't be underestimated. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great tool to, um, to be able to plan, plan out that whole year, especially for your staff. So I just wanted the top first top five tips are really about you just getting you kickstarted straight away. And, and the next top five really now is about us as leaders and role models and what we could do with it for our community and our team. So, um, so all good to keep going. Yeah, just uh, just probably more of a general comment. Um, I I know I know it's challenging when we put things in video form, when we put ourselves out there. That we uh, sometimes we fear what people will say. Sometimes uh, um, our professional community can be quite critical and meaningful in a good way. But I would say this is probably a moment for our community. Um, and us as professionals to have a generosity of spirit, um, to find the good, to reach out and support people who are putting things out there and who are, who are having a crack, um, having a crack and having a go at it because you only get better at it as you do it more and more and more. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things you and I spoke about during this is that, you know, being agile and getting it out there was sort of the enemy of perfection. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts around that and how you go about, you know, getting through yeah. that moment, getting it out. Yeah, plenty of thoughts around that. Uh, and as you know, uh, this has been a huge part of my world, even in the last three weeks, I've been filming things for the last five years and never done anything with it because I always found something wrong with the video. So 70% is good enough and don't let any, the enemy of good be perfection and just let it go. And, and, you know, again, at the end of the day, you know, I always used to say there's no such thing as a bad drill. You can always take one thing that as long as the kids are active and they're not in, not in you know, hashtag no more lines for the rest of our lives. I mean, there's something good in, you know, that you can see and take away or, or maybe how you might do it. But really, to be honest, David, um, you've just led me beautifully into strategy number six. Uh, so if we can um, 
click the next slide, uh, which of course is online content or, or an online course. So I just wanted to give a, a quick tip on that. So if you are going to do a video, um, one of the best things for you in structuring your own thinking to help with that is, um, is what we call um, the format. So if you imagine like I'll just draw a little X on, on your page like that, and in the top um, right hand corner, you've got the Y, you know, what are the problems that you're trying to solve? Why, why are you putting this out, out there? And then the what, what's important, the, the strategies that underpin what you believe, then the how might be the actual drill. And then the now, how are you gonna encourage people to take action? So I just love that as a, a quick little format um, idea to be able to help structure your thinking. And of course, think in threes, always think in threes. Um, you know, there's a reason why we have the three little pigs and Goldilocks and the three bears, of course. Um, blood, sweat and tears, three musketeers, three amigos. Anyway, list goes on. But just a, a great way for you to think in threes um, when you're going to release something. Um, and uh, the format idea um, is a great little way to, to help give you the confidence to just go for it. You know, now I'm going over the why, now I'm going over the what, now I'm going over the how, and now, now it's time now to take action, which of course I'll be asking everyone to do at the end of this webinar. Strategy seven, home program. Okay, so what am I talking here? What am I, what am I um, referring to? Well, as we know, people are having to be quarantined and self-isolation. Um, so giving a home program is so powerful and partnering with somebody perhaps who is a, a strength and conditioning person. I know, you know, I've got a, a Zoom meeting with Michelle Krause tomorrow um, to see what sort of home program in the fitness space is going on, just to brainstorm, collaborate, partner up. We've got flexibility, you've got your um, mindset conditioning. I've been doing a lot of work with um, specific visualizations with players at the moment, working on that side of the game. Match reviews is one of the biggest areas as coaches. You know, we're so busy coaching lessons that we don't often get around to, to watching them play. I think it's a huge area for our industry to develop further. Um, so, you know, let's not underestimate what can be done through a home program. Strategy eight. Really love that idea. Before you go on, Emma? Yep. Yeah, no, I really love that idea. Just in conversations in the last week or two with a couple of uh, teaching professionals, they're really using this time where there's no tournament play, there's no pressure on results to address, in some cases, some of the physical imbalances that their athletes have or some of the mental mental um, work that they'd like to do with their athletes or even just taking time to watch matches and sort of have them have their tennis intelligence uh, increase their tennis IQ. Um, so, you know, actually getting off the treadmill does pose an incredible opportunity to do things differently. And most of those things can be done by WhatsApp video or through a Zoom meeting. Yeah, and, and just having, having them watch their um, players that they're interested in and watching patterns and getting them to, you know, even if it's a couple of games and, and asking them what do they see um, with a clear tactical purpose. Did, you know, how many times did they go cross court before they go down the line? Um, what was the average length of the rally? I mean, it could be any of those ideas to be able to really spark the interest in our players and keep their interest um, engaged in this in this amazing sport that we, we're all connected to. So strategy eight is PD. So I'm sure professional development opportunities um, for yourself. Uh, I had a really nice email this week um, from somebody who said that her um, staff member had asked to watch um, one of my webinars on effective communication and she wanted the effective communication checklist. And, you know, that was really nice that her, the leader of, you know, her, um, her team uh, encouraged that. And so I really, um, you know, I really appreciated that. And, you know, I just wanted to take this moment to um, also, you know, the last three weeks, again, as, as you mentioned, uh, IT is not necessarily my wheelhouse. Uh, however, I'm just super excited. You know, yesterday um, I have uh, launched How to Run a Girl Power Camp. If anyone's interested in that, we've got PD on that. Tomorrow, the life coaching course, the Empower Hour, comes out um, on April 6th. Uh, Tennis NLP through the PTR comes out um, for professional development. Presentation Blueprint will be out um, by the end of next week if anyone wants to be a speaker and interested in. Um, refining that as a craft 
Um, we've got that PD coming out and that's all at uh, acecoach.com.au. So there are only some of the things that I know that I've been working uh, really, really hard on in, in trying to um, help people when they have this extra time. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's so important to encourage your staff as well on, on what there's so much free stuff as well online that you can that you can access. Um, but, uh, you know, what a great time for, all, for us all to upskill and, and PD. Strategy nine. I love that thought. Uh, no, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. No, we're, we're on the home straight. So uh, strategy nine is socialization. And I think this one's, this one's critical. You know, I think we can all go a little bit crazy just, uh, you know, at home in our own, own space. So, you know, what can we do to keep the community active and engaged? Is there ways that we can um, reach out to them? Um, perhaps, you know, what you and I are doing now, running a webinar for your community uh, could be something. You could still run an event, um, a, a webinar event or a community event. And I think connecting with those people. And I love the idea of, okay, well, your lesson's normally at four o'clock on a Wednesday. It's just checking in at four o'clock on a Wednesday, um, picking up the phone, making that call and just connecting with people and, um, and, showing, and showing up. I mean, that's, that's so much of it, um, half the battle, but I think that we, we need to do that and connect you know, um, with each other still even not, not physically, of course, uh, we can't, but, um, but there's so many other ways that we can. So I think that's just a, a really important point as leaders in our industry to, um, to do this. So, um, and finally, we're, we're, we're at strategy 10 already, which of course, those, anyone who knows me, I think they'll probably already know what strategy 10 is. <laughs> Motivation into activation. So uh, I, I mentioned three key points and the three key points around taking action uh, today is what can you do for you? What is it that you're going to do for you? Um, number two, what is it that you can do for your team or your staff? And, uh, or, you know, it could be your player as well. If you're um, coaching, um, if you're just out there, coach for yourself. And, uh, and then number three is your community. What is it that you could do for your community to give back and pay it forward? And, um, and they're my three requests um, that rounds out the, the 10 tips for how we can all keep moving um, during times of uncertainty. So, uh, so comments, questions, thoughts, feedback? Yeah. Uh, really, uh, before we jump into some of these questions, uh, your message just around our, our responsibility um, to continue to connect with our clients and our members, um, to continue any kind of rhythm that they might have had um, in terms of the time of the day or what they could expect. Um, and, and not just because that's the right thing to do, but that actually, it, it really, it does, it does help our brand. It is actually what we are. It's our point of difference. You know, we often think our point of difference is our technical knowledge around serve development or, you know, any, anything like that. But, but in actual fact, our point of difference is our humanity. And it's how we, it's how we create that sense of skillfulness, that sense of belonging, that sense of community. And probably now more than ever, the thing that we, uh, we the skill that we need to probably leverage and lean into the most. So I really love that message. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. And uh, I, I remember um, once asking you, David, about what makes a great coach in one to a maximum of three words. And uh, you said belief in possibilities was your answer. So, uh, so hopefully, um, yeah, we can all connect to one of the possibilities. Maybe there's one thing that I said that might've triggered an idea and, um, and lean into it, sink into our own reality and, and just take action and just have a go. So, um, so cool. Questions? Absolutely. So I'm going to, yeah, just going through, there are a couple of questions in here. Uh, the first one's uh, from Cameron in the UK, and uh, he, he's applauding you for all the new learning you're doing on, you know, online technology and stuff. Granted, he first of all, just wanted to know, first of all, was that your wheelhouse? Was that your skill set? And if it wasn't, how do you manage learning all that stuff quickly and then getting it up and going? Like, what are your, how have you approached that? 
Uh, so I, it's not my wheelhouse. And uh, so therefore everyone be, pa be patient with me <laughs> and be kind, <laughs> come from a point of kindness first, but honestly self-taught um, and pretty much self-taught because of this time. Uh, I think normally I would outsource, um, you know, not necessarily areas of areas of my of my skill set, and I still, no doubt, will probably do that down the line. But with this extra time, I've just um, trial and error. I'm, you know, I need to feel it. I'm kinesthetic, so I've got to, oh, I got stuck there. I got stuck there. Go go back to the help. Go to YouTube. Go to how do I do? How do I do? How do I do? I've never done so much. How do I do this on uh, YouTube? And someone's usually there with a, with an answer. And uh, and that's you know, um, Kajabi's been the online platform that I've become familiar with. And uh, thanks um, to my US sponsor, On Court, Off Court. And uh, you know, I'm really really grateful to uh, to have Kajabi as a platform, which I think is a really cool online learning platform. So far, it seems pretty easy. And uh, yeah, and so that's that's pretty much how I've approached it. Um, George wants to know, um, other than Zoom, what other, um, what other technologies or apps are you using to connect with people by video? What's in your toolkit? Yeah, so um, uh, pretty much, obviously, just the, the basics. So WhatsApp, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, uh, and, and Zoom. Zoom's my favorite. Um, I used to use Skype, but yeah, definitely, I'm very familiar um, with, you know, sort of obviously just even the free version, you can have three people, um, you know, on the screen uh, doing a, a little group group meeting. And uh, I, I, I love it. I love sharing screen. I love being able to work with someone in real time. And I love that from a coach's perspective because it helps you stack time on time. So rather than, you know, you could be pretty much writing up the, the um, say we use a, a grow model in a life coaching session and I'll be typing it as we go. And then at the end of the call, even usually when I'm on the call, I've already emailed through uh, the session notes for them to take action on. So um, Zoom is my favorite, but um, what about you? Um, I mean, I love Zoom. Uh, it seems pretty stable, but uh, probably if I'm just doing small planning calls, I've been using WhatsApp. We have four people on our WhatsApp video call. Um, yeah. And it seems pretty stable across country. So between those two, um, half of the half of the battle is just engaging with someone new for the first time and figuring out what platform you share together. That's usually half the battle. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. fantastic way to fantastic way to connect. Although I have learned the message of just be careful where the camera's pointing and what's behind you at the same time, because after a while you tend to be very conversational and maybe don't have your mind on where the camera is. Uh, so that's been an interesting learning. Um, yeah. Another question um, from Shelley here in Australia, just with programs that are having to be rescheduled or your own schedule, how are you managing your upcoming activities and rescheduling them? How are, how are you approaching this, putting things off or planning for the future? Uh, well, just, I mean, my top tip around that is just to be really mindful of your language. So one thing uh, that I tend to never use when I'm emailing them is cancellation. So really for me, this is a, a period where things are not canceled, they're just um, being shifted. So I love that word shift. And of course, we don't know when necessarily that might be shifting to, but it's better to pick a date that you think, you know, what's best case scenario, what's worst case scenario, what's most likely scenario, and just go with that, that middle date. And if you need to shift, 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 uh, and you know, keep people connected. Like I was meant to be running an event in um, Connecticut, and uh, I had an email from one of the people who had signed up for the April event, and um, and so just connected with that person and just said, listen, you know, we're shifting it. It's it's still going to happen, uh, and you know, as soon as we we have a confirmed date, I'll let you know. But it's just that keeping them interested. And um, he asked me a question about momentum, so very very quick, easy response for me to answer that. And uh, it's an example, I think, of how we just need to be mindful of our language. You know, if it's, oh God, it's, you know, it's a disaster and everything's canceling, everything's falling down around me and my, you know, I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders, all that, all that language, you know, again, you can have the pity party, but um, just get better and better at limiting how long you have it for and then, and then uh, make that wish list into a, real, a realistic list. 
absolutely love that. It's one of the things I take away from you in every one of our conversations. Um, we have another question from Rowan. He's interested in uh, resources around how he can identify his style of communication and maybe probably just a little bit more about your communication offerings. Yeah, sure. So uh, the best way um, would be to send me an email, uh, info at emmadoyle.com.au. And I have a, um, a little natural um, communication profile. It's like five questions that I can um, definitely send out uh, if, if somebody's interested in that. And then I have um, a USPTA webinar on effective communication um, for USPTA members. And if not, uh, my, I have an effective communication a presentation I did in Michigan uh, that will be up on my acecoach.com.au um, uh, membership site. It's you know, 10 bucks a month or $10 free. Jump online there and, and check that out. That should be ready, I'd say, mid next week at the latest. So that's, you know, two cups of coffee, 10 bucks, you can't go wrong, or 10 US dollars, sorry, but which is still two cups of coffee. Um, <laughs> here in Denver. Uh, so yeah, so basically, um, there's a couple of ways to get started, but um, send me an email and I can certainly um, send through those options. Fantastic. And uh, last year, um, probably just uh, in this moment where we have a bit of a um, um, tournament freeze and we're not playing competition, um, there's a question just around the sports culture reset and perhaps maybe what your thoughts are on um, any current education we might be able to do um, to, you know, address any of the numerous issues that um, coaches have with parents, whether they're helicopter parents or under-involved, over-involved. Um, what, what do you think we could be doing in this period of time to be engaging with and quote-unquote educating parents? Uh, I think, uh, honestly, that comes back to strategy seven. Um, parents love a home program. Um, parents love even curriculum development. They love knowing, like, even when, when you start back, uh, when you, maybe it's, even if we go with August um, here in the States, back into that fall season, you know, what's that training block going to be? And then what could they be doing now at home uh, through coordination exercises, um, through, you know, what can they be doing to help? And I think you, you can't go wrong if you give a great activity and you, you explain the why behind the activity. It could be just, you know, flipping it up and then flipping it back and then flipping it and creating an activity. Um, you know, it, it, any number of things, but educate, educate, educate. Articles um, that you've read uh, this morning, I um, just rewatched the, the TEDx talk um, by... Um, uh, Simon um, Sinek on uh, why good leaders make you feel safe, you know, so those things for parents, uh, you know, are, are invaluable. So um, as many resources as you can that you like, that you think supports and really your program and home programs. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, and probably this is it's probably a topic that you've done quite a bit. So anyone who would want just a little more detail around what you've done with parents, probably just email you directly to find out a little more of the meat on the phones. Um, yeah. That seems to be our questions for the day. I don't know if you have any final thoughts, Emma, any final wishes for us before I wrap this up? Uh, final wishes, take action. Um, let's keep moving together. Be kind to each other on the online content. Find the silver lining in, in each and every activity and just ask yourself, what, do you, what is it that you can do for your, either for yourself, for your team and for your community? Just act on one thing in one of those areas and then uh, this has been a good investment of everyone's time. I'm just really grateful um, to you, David, for hosting this and getting this started and I'm, you know, I'm excited about the other guests that you've got coming up and uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity to kickstart um, what a great idea, uh, you know, because we are all leaders in our community as coaches and, and being role models and, and helping each other during, during this time is um, just can't be underestimated. So, um, so thank you to everybody. And I always say the ball's in your court. I was going to try and throw it at my camera. Um, oh, yeah, I did it. So uh, <laughs> hope everybody caught that and, uh, and, and took that. Um, with a little bit of um, energy and uh, empathy, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Final words from you, David? Fantastic. 
Yeah, fantastic. First of all, thank you so much for sharing your ideas, for putting aside the time, for uh, for continuing to support our industry. Uh, it's really impressive for continuing to support me. Um, you know, the last couple of weeks, just being able to connect with you has been a godsend. Um, you know, just hearing your voice, hearing five minutes of inspiration, it's amazing what happens when you're in a bit of a rabbit hole just to hear another colleague and you know that's been incredible for me um what do we have to look forward to we're doing this over the next couple weeks next week um we've got a few great ones um we've got Kane Dewhurst from Vita Tennis a uh, large operator here in uh, here in Victoria and joining us with him is Darren Baker West he's a certified accountant and that's going to be around business continuity. So both everything you can do in terms of accessing um, government support, what do you need to consider as an employer, how do you manage your cash flow, and then really listening to how Kane has managed his programming and his business in these times in a very concrete way. So that's going to kick off next Tuesday for us here in Melbourne, which will be Monday, the rest of the world. Um, and then also later in the week, Alistair McCaw is going to be joining us to talk about culture, mindset, being champion-minded, um, what can you do in this day and age, both to continue to foster and develop your team during these times, but also how can you take your content online and in what ways can you continue to drive growth in your business. Um, we, so we've got that and we've got in the following weeks to come quite a few people around health and wellness, around curriculum development, around managing your members. So we've got a few interesting leaders coming up. Um, we'll post this both on Emma's page as well as on my website page, and we'll also create an event and send it out to everyone who's registered today. So we would invite you to come back to those conversations and please share them with your community, share them with anyone that you think was interested. Um, we wish you well, both from uh, Melbourne, Australia and from Denver, Colorado. Wish everyone uh, a great day ahead, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, David. Bye, everybody.